Hello and welcome back to Party with Marty, the YouTube channel for all things fabulous. And before you click off the video, as I know most of you do within the first 10 seconds of my content, you're gonna wanna stick around because I think there's something to be learned for everyone in this video. So today we're doing the long requested tier ranking of the 16 personalities as party guests. As we all know, the guest list can make or break your party. So consider this the definitive ranking on who to invite and what to expect from your guests based on personality type. So I'm gonna go through the categories in a second, but I first wanted to give the disclaimer of that although some guests may pose a bit of a challenge if you invite them to your party there is nothing on this earth that is ever an excuse for not inviting someone to your party. Did you hear that, Sarah Jane from the third grade? We are all inclusive on this channel and we will not stand for people being left out. And just a reminder to join the exclusive Patreon community where you can talk to fellow like-minded party planners such as yourself. There are a few tips and tricks that you can employ to get even the most introverted of introverts engaged in your soiree, such as a crafts table in a separate room, a library, or even asking free labor of your guests. So the first category is super guest. This category is for guests who don't just come to the party, they elevate the party. I'm talking those with natural charm, charisma, and that infectious energy that excites others at the party. They likely dress on theme, bring a gift, and participate in all party games couldn't ask for more. The next category is filler guest. This is for the NPCs of the world. They attend the party, they do their due diligence when it comes to games and gifts, but rather than initiating anything, they're more of a passive participator. Equally as important, however, as we know that head count is very important for a party. Moving on to our third tier, which is warning, vibe change. This tier is for those who have such strong personalities that their mere presence at the party is going to change the vibe completely. This, of course, is no reason to disclude them, but just something to be aware of. Our fourth tier is will help so they don't have to talk to people. This is just a great tier. I have found that there are a few types of guests introverts in particular, anyone who's going through a breakup and looking to distract themselves, that's a great one to capitalize on. People who didn't bring a gift and so are feeling rightfully guilty and so looking to overcompensate, etc., etc. These types of guests are more than happy to help out as it keeps their hands busy, keeps them out of conversation and helps to alleviate that righteous guilt. My fellow party planners out there know just how valuable these kinds of guests can be provided they know what they're doing. And we'll get to that later. And our final tier is kids table. This isn't to say that kids tables are absolutely necessary at a party. This is more of a proverbial kids table. This category is for those who require that little bit of extra attention. Not babysitting per se, but... So we'll be going through the types via temperament groupings, starting with the introverted types and then their extroverted counterparts. ISTP is first. Now I find that ISTPs are almost always happy to help so that they don't have to talk to people. Party planners, if you're going to invite an ISTP, it's in your best interest to leave them a task to do that is both practical and antisocial. For example, lighting a fire, cooking the barbecue, sweeping the leaves out of the pool, painting your guest room. This way the ISTP feels included and you get a little something out of it as well. ESTPs are almost certainly going to be a vibe change. ESTPs bring a very larger than life atmosphere to any party. And this can come with obnoxious laughter, shenanigans that are at risk of making others feel uncomfortable and the occasional illegal substance. Don't worry though, you can mitigate the damage by sending them a passive aggressive message before the party or even mid party. You can just sort of gently grab their elbow and escort them aside to a private area where you can remind them about appropriate party decorum. I personally have found the passive aggressive message or the mid party arm pull to be highly effective and not at all triggering to the ESTP. Oh, ISFPs are filler guests and great ones at that. I find they're super happy to chat to guests, participate in games, eat the food, drink the punch, provided the ESTP hasn't already been along to spike it. I will warn you, however, that the ISFP does tend to not bring a gift, either because they've left it till the last minute or just because they simply thought they could just slip under the radar. <laughs> but as we love to say on this channel, no forgotten present goes without resentment. ESFPs think they're super guests, and I mean, they would be. They dress on theme, participate in games with fervor, chat to people, charismatic, if not for the fact that 
again, I'm gonna need you to step up in the gift department, sweetie. It doesn't matter if you've won best dressed, you're nothing but a filler guest, because if you're not gifting, our friendship is drifting. ISTJ is a fantastic little helper, and you're probably not gonna have much of a say in this, to be fair, because they'll likely start refolding your napkins or shifting around your tea display or getting out the measuring tape to measure the placemat to plate ratio before you've even noticed that they're missing from the party. Very sneaky little saboteurs. Look, my approach with ISTJs has been to pre-prepare a list of tasks that they can do that you yourself are less attached to. That way they can keep busy all night and feel like they're making a difference. ESTJs are super guests, no question. They are great with small talk, always on time, always bestowing a gift, and they dress on theme. They also have no qualms running the party games if that particular thing gives you anxiety. Although I'm not sure why you're running a party if it does. Admittedly, they do have a tendency to try and take over things in the kitchen, but you can always handle this by sending an ENFJ in there to talk deeply at them while they're trying to do tasks. They'll be out of there faster than you know. ISFJ, another excellent filler guest. They show high appreciation and satisfaction from your party planning efforts, color coding especially, and with the added relief and gratitude of knowing that they didn't have to and probably will never have to plan a party themselves. So they're really just so grateful to be there. They're great at holding things when you need to do an oven check and they just fill out the numbers nicely. ESFJ is of course another super guest. I mean really, who better ticks the boxes when it comes to party etiquette? Other ESFJs, not myself, can be a little controlling and pedantic, especially for a party that they didn't plan themselves, but I'm not judging. I don't judge. Okay, we're gonna move on to the intuitive types now, so I'm just gonna take a vitamin C. When it comes to INFPs, I don't tend to put them on the kids' table. They just sort of end up finding their way there anyway. In some cases, in fact, they literally get a table, isolate it from the rest of the group, and just sit there playing with grass, eating a cupcake, or just banging on various objects around them. This can be helpful in terms of forming a sort of introvert hub where people can go to introvert. Some people like to be introverted and I can't speak into that. That's not my journey, but all power to them. And I always make sure that I end up leaving some chippies there for them. ENFPs. They are party fiends. I love inviting ENFPs to my parties. They keep the mood light, they know how to chat, they're happy with people laughing at their expense, which is always an asset. And they're also the type to instigate those obscure party traditions like the chicken dance or the nut bush, even if they don't know the choreography. I can't, however, put them with good conscience into super guest because again, if you don't bring a gift, I'm going to be miffed, okay? <laughs> I truly don't know how some people think they can get away with not bringing a gift to a party. Do you think that little baby Kevin should have to suffer for your lack of organization, Carol? Oh, INFJs are a blessing at parties, prime filler guest. Not only do they usually bring warmth to the ambiance with their smile and friendliness, but they are an excellent hack for keeping the introverts engaged, whether it's dragging them into the corner for a DNM or even running a therapy session at the kids' table. And even though they do have the tendency to remain seated in the corner with said introvert during the party games, it takes nothing more than a passive aggressive smile for them to feel guilty and join, which is healthy. Now ENFJs are folk who navigate the party scene with utter grace and ease. There's not a more pleasant guest in all the land. They have the particular gift of having all the regular qualities of a super guest, but with the added bonus that they do not care about practical details. I promise you, you could knock over a glass bottle right next to them, and if they're in a conversation with someone, they will not notice. So you can guarantee they're not gonna go behind your back into your kitchen and try and rearrange your tea towels. And I can guarantee that after having a sneak peek at their tea towel drawer last summer, trust me. Now, INTJs have never actually turned up to any of my parties, unfortunately. Not even my gothic literature themed party or my shades of grey colour themed party. Not even my pointy objects themed party. Admittedly, that party was a mistake and I most definitely should not have had an actual kids table there. Let this be proof that one cannot incentivize an INTJ to go somewhere that they do not wish to go. And you'd best start practicing emotional detachment meditations now lest they hurt you further, my friends. I mean, I don't even have a category for INTJs because they've never come. 
Maybe they put them in super guest. That might incentivize them. But that would be dishonest. Oh, who cares about the integrity of this chart? I need them to love me. Just like to apologize for that lawn mower in the background, if you can hear that. Bad neighbor clearly didn't listen to the pamphlet that I put in his mailbox saying that I'd be filming today. ENTJs similarly do enjoy a good party, but show very little regard for party etiquette. Showing up late as they please, RSVPs be darned. Eating food without giving back in the way of small talk with other guests. And they take every game far too seriously to the point where I've had to employ emergency birthday cake measures more than once. There's nothing like a birthday cake to divert the attention in the room. And there is always someone's birthday within the month window of the party date. You're welcome. For all these reasons, ENTJs are a vibe change and a hazardous one at that. I once had an ENTJ completely distract my guests by hosting an impromptu who can name all the United States the fastest game. And it ended up consuming all of my guests for the rest of the night. Pinata be darned. Cocktails be darned. And for what? No one can name all the states in the space of a party. No one can name all the states in the space of a party. No one can name all the states in the space of a party. In the same way that you and I were born to host, INTPs were born for the kids' table. I've definitely noticed that INTPs are more content to a party with some food and a private space where they don't have to talk to anyone. But I'm not going to put them in the will help category because, well... They're too slow with tasks. No disrespect, I love INTPs. And remember, if they're a guest, they're no pest. Worst case scenario, show them where the computer is, the video games, the library, and you can guarantee that they'll be staying at least until the socially acceptable time to leave a party without it reflecting badly on my name. Oh, look at that, we're already at the last type. ENTPs are valued extroverts with just so many valuable things to say about the world that are not at all disruptive to the ambience of an ideal party. No, look, they'll always get an invite, but just be warned that they are a vibe change. Even just because they don't seem to smile when they say hello or say thank you when they leave a party or bring a gift. People need to bring gifts. Oh. Sorry about that, lost my cool a little bit. Look, I'm not triggered by ENTPs or anything, I'm just warning you. They can be quite provocative and wild cards in terms of who they're gonna talk to and who they're gonna offend. Spoiler, it's always me. With this information, ladies and gentlemen, you are now equipped to cater your guest list for your perfect party. Just remember, it's not nice to leave people out. As you can see, I've curated this entire guest list without discriminating or isolating anyone, and I think that should be our attitude in general to party planning. Join me next week for April's cake decorating class. Though just a reminder, sharp objects are strictly prohibited after the trauma of my last party.